In this video I'm going to show you the results of the design of a broadband ballon for a biconic antenna. I'm going to show you three things. I'm going to show you how I made a three port vector network analyzer. I'm going to show you a fixture that mounted the ballon under test so that I could test its performance reliably and repeatably. And I'm going to show you a ballon substitute that I used to validate that the test setup was actually working correctly. I originally thought that uh, finding a ballon for a, such a common antenna would be an easy task, but it turned out not to be the case. So I've ended up developing my own ballon and my own test tools to figure out the best way of doing it. And this setup that you see here is one of those test fixtures that I have created. And the aim of this tool is to test the balance of a ballon, a pretty fundamental thing to do. And that requires a three port VNA. And that is what you're looking at here. I don't have a three port VNA, so I've made one up with what I have uh, in, my, in my workshop, my lab. So why does this fixture act as a vector network analyzer? Well, at this end, it's taking an unbalanced output from a signal generator. So the signal is going down the center core, and the shield is connected all the way through until the adapter here. And the two points that you see here, only the, only the center core signal is fed into the X and Y inputs of the oscilloscope. The oscilloscope is earthed to the metal in the base here and so the earth reference point is sitting back here. So when I take this piece of coax out, the calibration setup, take that out and substitute a ballon, I'll be able to test the balance of that ballon. So it'll have an unbalanced input from a signal generator and it will produce a balanced output to the X and Y inputs of the oscilloscope. And that will then display this vector. So it is a unbalanced to balanced three port vector network analyzer. So how does this perform? Well against the calibration setup what I'll do is I will run it through a range of frequencies and what you'll see is that the X and Y output, the phase difference will remain the same. So the line will remain at a 45 degree angle. So at the moment it's at 10 megahertz. If I change that to 50 megahertz, you'll see the angle of the line stays the same and the amplitude is reasonably constant as well. If I change this to 100 megahertz, you'll see that the amplitude is starting to decrease as the, uh, as the mismatch across the capacitance of the oscilloscope changes the impedance from 100 purely resistive down to the 100 ohm resistors in parallel with the input capacitor but the phase importantly the phase remains the same so the line still stays at 45 degrees so I'm going to ramp up the output of the signal generator just to maintain something that's easy to look at and if I change the frequency now to 120 megahertz you'll see the amplitude reduce significantly because this is only a 100 megahertz oscilloscope so 120 megahertz is in excess of what it's supposed to be able to do easily anyway so if we go up to 140 megahertz which is definitely beyond its uh, specifications you'll see again that the amplitude has reduced but the phase angle remains constant and again I will amp put up the signal amplitude and we'll go up to 150 megahertz which is getting close to what this oscilloscope can actually do um, 
but yet again the amplitude is reduced as you'd expect and the phase difference that the angle of the line remains at exactly 45 degrees so what this shows is that the this fixture um, because it's got effectively an ideal ballon sitting in it at the, in the moment uh, works well in terms of identifying any mismatch or in this case match uh, of the ballon between the unbalanced output of the signal generator and the balanced input to the oscilloscope. So I will put the frequency up to 160 megahertz which is probably going to cause this thing to trip out. Oh no, it's still in there, it's still going. So let's just ramp up the frequency a little bit. So we're 100 and 170 megahertz. The amplitude is rapidly going down. We'll just uh, wind that up a bit. So amplitude's up to the 13 dBm. That's as high as it'll go. Frequency is now 175 megahertz. And we're up to 180 megahertz, still going. Amplitude is decreasing, but the phase remains constant. And the frequency is now 190 megahertz, so well beyond the advertised bandwidth of the oscilloscope. And we're up to 200 megahertz, and it's still there. So the amplitude is greatly reduced because of that uh, capacitance across the oscilloscope inputs. But uh, at 200 megahertz, you can see that the angle, that 45 degree angle, the phase relationship between the X and Y inputs has remained constant. So from basically from 10 megahertz all the way up to 200 megahertz, this uh, fixture um, is correctly measuring the vector relationship between the uh, balanced inputs from the unbalanced output of the signal generator. So the next thing to do is to replace this ideal ballon with the ballon that I've designed and see how that performs. What you're looking at here is the difference between the calibration cable and the ballon that I've developed and are going to test. So the calibration cable put a signal down the center core of a coax and split that at the end into equal parts that go into the X, Y core inputs of the oscilloscope. The ballon that I've developed, which I'll call a, a linear ballon, does it in a different way. It has a signal going down the center core that goes off to one channel, and the shield, which starts off at unbalanced at this end, goes off to the other channel of the oscilloscope and the ferrites here what they do is they suppress any common mode voltage so the only voltages that this setup wants to allow through are differential voltages which is the output from a biconic antenna so if this works it means that the differential output of the antenna will start off balanced here and it will end up unbalanced at the other end. So let's hook this up and see if it works. Okay so this is the uh, test setup. We've replaced the calibration cable um, with the ballon under test. We've got the signal coming through this uh, line of ferrites here, so we're wrapping the ferrites around the cable instead of wrapping the cable around the ferrites. And these ferrites here will allow differential uh, current to go through because the magnetic field from the differential current will sum to zero, which means that the ferrites won't see any of that uh, current going through, that differential current going through. At the end, we end up with a balanced voltage. So we've got an output taken from the shield and from the center core. 
and those go into the oscilloscope inputs, the X and Y inputs, and then we'll be able to see on the scope whether this works or not. Okay, what we're going to do now is look at the frequency response across the entire bandwidth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sweep the signal generator from 1 megahertz all the way up to the limits of the oscilloscope. And what you're seeing at the moment is the individual X and Y outputs of the ballon. You can see that the amplitude is quite different between the two channels and the phase angle is also well away from 180 degrees. But given that this is well below the target frequency range, it's pretty reasonable. I'm going to sweep the signal generator starting at 1 megahertz and let's see what happens. So we're at 1 megahertz at the moment. We'll go up to 5 megahertz. You can see now that the phase is much closer to 180 degrees. It's actually showing at 187 and the amplitude difference between the two channels has decreased significantly. And if we switch to the XY display, we'll see that uh, it is already showing a good 45, well, almost 45 degree angle on the phase shift. And you'll notice that uh, this display here is at 90 degrees to the uh, the ballon substitute, the, the calibrations ballon that I used. That ballon, uh, which really wasn't a ballon, had, um, had a zero phase difference between the two outputs, between the a, X and the Y, and this ballon with the, fer the ferrite cores has a 180 degree phase shift, and you can see that the display has shifted 90 degrees. So it starts sweeping from 5 megahertz, and let's see what happens. So by the time I get to 10 megahertz, which we're at the moment, that line is starting to look much more like a line and less like a loop. I'll continue to sweep. We're up to we're up to 30 megahertz now. 50 megahertz. Seventy five megahertz, a hundred megahertz, and you can see that the response is basically flat. Now, as we get up, up above a hundred megahertz, this exceeds the bandwidth, advertised bandwidth of the oscilloscope, and the amplitude will start to fall. And you can see that happening now. So I'm now up to a hundred and fifty megahertz. 180, 200 megahertz. I'm going to boost the signal level a bit here so that we've got something to look at. And you can see the distortion there from a straight line is uh, due to the oscilloscope and not to the ballon. So continuing on from 200 megahertz now up to 240 megahertz two hundred and seventy five megahertz and again I'm going to stop here and increase the signal level so I'm at 3 dBm at the moment and I'm going to increase that to 10 dBm and I'll start sweeping from 280 megahertz well above what the oscilloscope is advertised being capable of 300 megahertz 325 megahertz 350 megahertz now clearly the amplitude that is uh, being displayed by the oscilloscope is dropping off as the frequency response of the oscilloscope rolls away but through in this entire sweep you can see that the phase relationship between the X and Y has remained the same so the angle of what we're looking at has stayed basically the same. 
So let's see how far we, we can go here. So we're up to 370 megahertz now. I'm going to max the level as far as the signal generator will go. And it's going to adjust the sensitivity. We'll start by sweeping from 370 megahertz. Still going over 400 megahertz, and still that line that you see there, which is now more a small loop, is maintaining the same phase relationship. It's maintaining the same angle. So we're up to 450 megahertz, 460. The line is very short now, but it's still showing that same phase relationship. 470 megahertz, and it's pretty much. Uh, hit the limit of what I can achieve but we are sitting now at 500 megahertz and although the, the line is very short it's maintained that uh, that phase relationship so I'm pretty confident that if I had a wider bandwidth oscilloscope that we would see much the same amplitude and phase relationship from about 5 megahertz all the way up to 500 megahertz at least and possibly more. Given the simplicity of the design of this Bellin, that's a pretty impressive performance. So the purpose of the VNA was to measure the critical characteristics of the Bellin under test. I needed to measure the phase angle which ideally should be 180 degrees. I needed to measure the amplitude balance between two of the ports and I also needed to measure the frequency bandwidth of the ballon to ensure that it had a flat response across the bandwidth of interest and the requirement for the ballon was to have a 30 megahertz to 350 megahertz bandwidth so the three port VNA that I designed allowed me to measure all of those parameters to confirm that the ballon met my requirements